The world is changing. Games are changing. That's just a fact. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this, of course. And I get that these services cut down on carts, leaving more room inside your modern minimalist apartments. You bunch of twi- Anyway, the point I'm trying to get to, and it's certainly taken me long enough, is the game carts won't be produced forever. And that's if you can even call these piddling things cartridges anyway. So let's take a look at what I think are the five systems that have the best cartridges, in terms of both functionality and style. So the rules here are basically, a system is judged on all the types of cartridges it spawned. Enjoy! Number five. I'll start with a controversial choice. This might be on many people's worst carts list, but personally I can only applaud the Magnavox Odyssey 2's attempt to do something a little bit different. Boasting handles that makes yanking them out of the console a breeze, they're also designed to interlink and stack on top of each other, which is a nice touch. The metal section at the bottom also helps protect the cartridge's more delicate parts. Oh, and if you don't think the handle is useful, then just check out this completely relevant case study comparison with a cart design released in roughly the same era. Number 4. The carts, or cards if you will, for the TurboGrafx-16 are possibly the most stylish entry on this list. They're the type of thing that can be approved by James Bond himself. Brosnan or Connery that is, not Lazenby or more. Named Hue cards or Turbo Chips, they're very thin and have painted on labels, with many taking advantage of this and showing off some nicely detailed artwork. You can also see the labels when you slot the cards into the system, which shows that some real thought went into the design of how the cart and console work together. The TurboGrafx-16 may not have been a success, but the design of the carts can't be faulted. Number 3. There is, in my opinion at least, a more classic looking cart to come, but for sheer chunk-tastic appeal, the NES games are hard to beat. I mean, just look at the thing. It's like someone threw away the cartridge design rulebook and just made it up as they went along. They're heavy, there's a huge area for a detailed label, and an indented part that looks like the trench run on the Death Star. The Neo Geo carts are bigger, sure, but they had at least a practical reason to be so huge. The NES ones are just seemingly excessive for the hell of it. And I love it. Number 2. In terms of varied cart design, not much can top the Mega Drive. My drawer of games for the system is a bustling zoo of ideas, and although it will give those who crave order a migraine, you can't fault the sheer breadth of ideas on display. The standard carts were fine and perfectly practical, but then you had the J-Cart, which allowed two extra controllers to be plugged in, so you could play stuff like Pete Sampras Tennis and Micro Machines with four players. Things got arguably even stranger with Sonic and Knuckles, which used a lock-on technology which got you to plug previous Sonic titles into the top. This then allowed you to play slightly altered versions of the games. Sure, there were missteps, the less said about EA's high meg carts with the useless yellow tabs the better, but if you want a chocolate box approach to cartridges then the Mega Drive is the system for you. My mom always said, life was like a box of Mega Drive games. And number one is... Ask someone, anyone, to draw a game cartridge, and there's a good chance that the standard Atari 2600 design will be the one they'll sketch out. A simple rectangle with ample room for some creative artwork on the front, and the name written in caps at its top, is the definition of a simple yet devastatingly effective design. The standard carts with their slight silver sheen are my favourite, but the imaging ones are even shinier. The Konami variants were also worthy of praise. I just don't really have anything bad to say about these carts, from the way they're designed to protect the pin connectors and how it's easy to tell what game it is when it's in the system. Talk about getting it right first time. Kudos Atari. Kudos. So that's the list done and dusted, but what would a load of good cartridges be if there weren't some bad ones to compare them against? So please do join me next week where I'll count down what I think are the worst systems for cartridge design. I'll hope to see you then. Thank you. I'll take this then. <laughs>